I'm still in bed. That's about 11 o'clock down here, 10 minutes to 11. I had a, a good deal of uh, pain in my side last night. I guess it's still knitting and uh, in my back right over my hip pocket. Uh, but I went out and swore in Larry O'Brien yesterday about three miles and did all right. And, uh, and I swore in John Gronowski and, uh, and uh, I came back and uh, talked to Califano once, and that's about all I did yesterday, but uh, I guess I got to take it a little slow for a few days. Yes, I'm sure of that. I've been uh, trying to do what you asked me to do, think about this matter. Haven't come up with anything, I'm sorry to say. I don't know anybody in this field, and um, except, uh, as I say, the man was in there, I know his record, but um, I'm sure I don't, I, I think you have many more sources of information than I have on this. In the meantime, of course, you know, we had an election, and that's what took up my time yesterday. Yeah. I think it means, and I think it's just as clear as a, uh, a nose on your face. And I think it's going to happen all over America, and I think it's just, uh, it has happened in the past. There have been exceptions. Temporarily, you fool a few people, but the, uh, I know it, you get disheartened, and I do, and you think that you go out there and try taking a letter truck driver and tell him what's best for him, because been mistreated and how he's got to go vote and you won't give up, but because he doesn't see even what's best for himself, he won't cooperate and so forth, and I feel that way every day, but when the chips are down and and uh, you hurt the man and you whip him and 
chain them and handcuff them and make the box popular, go to the polls. He has a better smell and a better sense of values and knows better what's better for the country than John McCloy. And this old farmer that rides looking the back end of the mules on the cultivator all day long, he just sits there and thinks. And it's his boy that's in Vietnam, and it's his sister that's out of a job. It's his brother-in-law that got his car repossessed. And somehow or other, they just add up and they do what's right if you can get them enough interest in them to vote. Now, we've got the most charming, the most able, the most uh, potentially uh, effective governor of this state that we've produced since I was born. But he got to the Negros all supported him, the Mexicans all supported him, and a good many of the people supported him. But uh, the extreme left wing fought him, and labor fought him, and they've driven him to the wall. And now he's developing into almost a crusty reactionary. And he appointed the first Negros to office in this state. He appointed the first Negros on board of regents and Mexicans. And he brought them into his own office. But by God, when the chips were down on something, I've forgotten what wasn't voters' rights, but way back there on something before governor's conference, he went on television and, and opposed me, I guess, on the first civil rights bill, uh, accommodations, the accommodation section. He said that the states ought to do it instead of Washington or something. He took the other side. He came up for a four-year term for governor. Now, we ought to have a four-year term. I voted for a four-year term. Labor opposed it because they just mad at him because he opposed accommodations. Yeah. And there were 10 amendments on the ballot. One of them was to let the legislators have a four-year term. One of them was to let the governor have a four-year term. One of them was to raise the salary of the speaker and lieutenant governor from $20 a day to, to 12000 or something. Now, all three of those amendments ought to pass. Uh, the other one was a letter, veterans land grab, kind of, uh, selling more land to veterans. That was four, and I've forgotten the fifth one. Now, on the other side, one of them was a health amendment. One of them was to lend money for kids to go to school. One of them was to increase teachers' pay and teachers' retirement. One of them was cur mills. Uh, I can't think the other one, but it was, a, it was an education, health, uh, socially conscious thing. Those five overwhelmingly were accepted. The other five were overwhelmingly defeated. Even with a brilliant, attractive, popular governor whose polls goes 86% now. So, so they can't carry over their stuff. They don't, Adam Clayton Powell, John Connolly, Lyndon Johnson just can't do it. Roosevelt couldn't do it. Roosevelt endorsed me, spent more money, did more for me in 1941 when I was 33 years old because he scared Martin Dyer to be elected. And damned if Pappy O'Daniel, the biggest demagogue Texas ever produced, didn't beat Roosevelt and me and my Dyer's, all of us put together. <laughs> this old man thought that he was for him because he was for old age pensions and because he was for the working man and because he talked their language. Now, these folks, uh, these folks express themselves. If you ever saw the mayor of Cleveland, you'll know why the Negro out there did the job. They felt like that, uh, that he just, uh, he just, uh, he, he just doesn't have their feel. He doesn't uh, have their rapport. He's not, uh, He's not a little thing. Adam's had enough of his problems, and these folks got to where they think they got enough sense to act for themselves. They don't need Johnson to tell them. They'll tell you the same thing. They don't need Wilkins to tell them. They don't need uh, Adam Clayton Powell to tell them. And if you don't, you don't can do nothing except get them to vote, I'll guarantee you, and I'll resign my office 12 months from now if I'm not right you'll see the people come into power in every southern state if you let them vote. They beat the governor, they beat the president, they beat everybody down here this time. I, I was for all these amendments, so was the governor for the socially conscious ones. But the point is, the four-year term that the governor wanted, they voted against it just because they thought that, by gosh, he was a little bit too much of the interest, and they didn't want a four-year governor. They wanted to get a crack at him every two. And, uh, uh, they can do it in Louisiana. Russell Long will be the only, he'll be no Ellen in Louisiana. He'll be the only one that survives that, he and Hale Boggs. Uh, the same thing will happen in, in the Mississippi, just sure as I'm sitting here. The same, every one of these states that you consider the worst states in the Union will wind up being the best. And you don't have to get your 40% vote. All you got to do is just get about 14 to 20. That's right. 
whether it's the Rockefellers or the Laskers or whoever it is that's got a lot of money, the Spinells or anybody that has helped before that might, I'll have men uh, when I get up off my back and see if I can't get them to get something. I'll even put in some myself quietly if you don't advertise it. No, I, I don't want to advertise anything. I want to do it. I, I, I know that you can emancipate and save this country if you get them to vote. And I think you think that you can control till you get that to one percent. You can run this show with I know better. If you give me you can do it with twenty percent. If you give me fifteen, twenty percent of the votes in ten states, I'll 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 tell you that they'll be they'll be from the people. Look what Buckley did with thirteen percent of New York City. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. With thirteen percent. That's right. Now back to the Weaver thing. Uh what I want to do uh, I, I find the deal of folks that think that Lawrence is too shy and, and uh, that uh, he, uh, uh, that the Congress